Go ahead and mount it on the bike. Okay, so I've got the motor mount mocked up on the frame. You want to do that and then start investigating if, is your motor going to fit? Do we have enough room here? Now as well, when you're deciding your placement of your motor mounts, number one, you, you got to figure out is the motor going to fit? Do you have it at the right height? Do we have enough clearance between the chain ring, the crank arm, and the motor? Here, yes, we've got plenty of room here. The chain isn't going to rub at the bottom of the, uh, of the mount here on the other side. That, that's a consideration. Then as well, you've got to see if your mounting holes are going to line up, if they're not, uh, if things aren't uh, aligned correctly. Uh, one other thing you want to do is get the bike level. And see, see to it that your motor mount is level because you don't want it at, at, at uh, an extreme angle or anything here. That, that's not going to be good for it. And uh, I've got my rear end a little bit lower here, but uh, I, I measured it earlier and it, it looked fine where it is. As well, you want to make sure that you've got enough clearance for your choke lever here. This here uh, just barely does have enough clearance here, so it'll fit. I can even go down just a little bit here in the back, and I'm, I'm going to investigate doing that. Uh, one, other re one other thing you want to do when mocking this up here, you want to get your rear wheel installed and then uh, put your chain on and see to it if your chain uh, will, uh, if your transmission will line up here you have some adjustment on your mounting plate so you can slide your motor in and out of the frame to, uh, to get proper alignment on the uh, on the transmission so it will line up with the, your sprocket here on the rear wheel. I have found that typically I need to push the motor in in order to uh, get things to line up. Sometimes I even have to go ahead and grind a little bit out and enlarge the holes here on the mounting plate so I can push the motor even further in to get my alignment here. Okay, next up we're going to uh, put our fender on the bike. Before we do that we're going to need to trim it. You're going to need to cut about an inch in and about maybe seven, eight inches up. I've done this so many times I just do it without thinking about it. Uh, what you can do is uh, <clears throat> put your motor on, see where your sprocket is for your transmission, and it, it's about right here. So, And you'll need to cut up a little bit here because remember your chain's going to move up and down in operation. So I'm going to cut it about right here, which on this one here is about nine and a half inches up. So what I'm going to do here is here's where you have this uh, piece here for the mounting hole. Here I'm just going to cut a straight line from there up nine and a half inches and then go over here and then we'll toss this piece. I'll hit it with some uh, clear coat to stop it from rusting. Okay, you have a couple of options. You can use a pair of uh, tin snips to cut it. That'll leave it a little bit ragged. You'll have to go back and do a bit of sanding and the light and filing it down. You can use a hacksaw or you can use a uh, angle grinder with a cutting wheel. Uh, some people say I'm crazy for not wearing a face shield, but uh, I do wear glasses if nothing else.
Okay, so we're going to do a test fit here. I can see that I'm going to have some problems getting all of the uh, these here uh, Allen screws to line up to hold on the uh, the motor plate here. And as well, I don't have these tightened up yet. One thing I found that I can do, I can go in and grind a little bit off of the, the top surface here. You don't want to take a lot off, but you, you take off, I don't know, about maybe an eighth of an inch here on, uh, on all three of these ribs here, these supports here, and uh, that'll give you a little extra wiggle room to get your screws in. Uh, I have gone in and just taken my cutting wheel and cut this slot here, cut a little bit of meat off of that to give me room to put my screws in, but we're just going to go ahead and grind a little bit off of this here. Okay, so here is our, our uh, plate here. This one is the rear plate and the rear plate is angled down a little bit too far. So what I want to do is I want to raise it up. And in order to do that, I'm going to trim a little bit of metal, grind a little bit of metal out of the top part here. That way we can bring this up a little bit. Plus, I'm going to grind off about maybe, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or more here at the front and kind of angle it back. That'll give me a little bit more room to get my mounting plate on and have access to the uh, to the mounting hole uh, to the uh, the uh, the threaded hole here that holds the motor plate on. The front plate is angled up a little bit, so here at the bottom here at the back edge, I'm going to take a little bit of the metal off here, and that will allow me to bring it down somewhat. So we've got the the back end down and the top end up and we bring them together here and that's going to give me uh, better uh, positioning So what I'm going to do here is um, I need to grind a little bit of metal off here and I'm, I'm marking about maybe an eighth of an inch here. This is going to be the front of the bike. I need to move the motor in a little bit here. I've just found that to be the case in most installations. So what I do with this particular one here is I just I take a drill bit and I go in there. I don't have uh, the right file or whatever, but I find if I use a drill bit and, and ream it and bring it back and forth, I can take a little bit of metal off. And it's just a little bit that I need to take off. And uh, I do that and then I, I install the motor kind of pushed in and then uh, that way I, I've got plenty of adjustment here. I, I won't have to take it off and uh, grind it if it doesn't fit here. So I just automatically do it. Most of the time I have to take advantage of that little bit of space here.
Okay, so we want to check our chain here. Here's, here's a detail of what we got here. The chain has a plenty of distance away from the wheel. And it doesn't look like it's going to rub the chain at all. We're good to go. Good girl. Yeah, you listen to me. Okay, now your chain is going to move in this direction here. We want to put this clip on to where the closed end is in the direction of travel. So if it's on the bottom, it's going towards the back. And if it's on the top, it's going towards the motor. That way, in case it hits anything, if it hits anything in the opened end, it can knock the clip off. All right, we got that. We've got the motor secure. We've got the rear end secure here. We